Weinberg principle, named after the scholars who introduced the idea, states that if a population is not evolving, the allele and genotype frequencies will not change between generations. An allele is a version of a gene, and a genotype is the genetic makeup of an individual. The mechanisms of evolution all have one thing in common. They all change the frequency of at least one gene within a population, which is defined as an interbreeding group. So as long as the frequency of one gene has changed between generations, evolution has occurred. If there's a population where no evolution is occurring, which is rare in natural populations, that population is said to have reached Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In addition, if a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, the genotype frequencies are predictable based on the allele frequencies. So knowing the frequencies in one generation allows for accurate calculations of the frequencies in each successive generation, as long as the population stays in equilibrium. This is significant because by using the Hardy-Weinberg principle, you know what to expect if the population is not evolving. If the population's gene pool doesn't remain constant, then you can say evolution is taking place. Let's take a look at the conditions required for the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium requires the complete absence of evolution, so none of the forces of microevolution can be operational. This means the following conditions must be met. There can be no mutations or natural selection, mating must be random, and there can be no genetic drift or gene flow. These requirements are very difficult to meet in natural populations. However, the Hardy-Weinberg principle is a useful tool for determining whether a population is evolving at a particular site. In order to do this, you need to know whether allele or genotype frequencies are changing. Let's take a look at how you would go about calculating genotype and allele frequencies. In this population of butterflies, some butterflies are blue and have the genotype Big B Big B, or homozygous for the dominant allele. Some are purple with the genotype Big B Small B, or heterozygous. And some are pink with the genotype Small B Small B, or homozygous for the recessive B allele. To calculate the genotype frequencies, we need to count the number of individuals with each genotype and divide by the total number of individuals. In this example, the genotype frequencies are, for the homozygous dominant genotype, 1 divided by 10, which is equal to 0.1 or 10%. For the heterozygous genotype, 3 divided by 10, which is equal to 0.3 or 30%. And for the homozygous recessive genotype, 6 divided by 10, which is equal to 0.6 or 60%. To calculate the allele frequencies, you need to look at the individual B alleles. The frequency of the dominant B allele would be calculated by summing the total number of dominant Bs in the population, so 5, divided by the total number of alleles, 20. This gives you a frequency of 0.25. The same logic applies for the recessive B alleles, and so the frequency of the recessive B would be 15 divided by 20, which is 0.75. Note that both the genotype and allele frequencies always add up to 1 or 100% because they are proportions of the whole population. Once we have the frequencies, the next thing we have to do is to predict what the genotype frequencies should be if the population was in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. For this, we have to consider the entire gene pool, or the complete set of genes of the population. Assuming random mating, we can use our allele frequencies to determine that there is a 25% chance that a sperm from this population will be the dominant B allele and a 75% chance that a sperm will be the recessive B allele. The same probabilities apply to eggs from this population. We can use a diagram similar to a Punnett square to calculate the expected genotype frequencies of the next generation. The genotype frequency for the homozygous dominant genotype is 0.25 times 0.25, which is 0.06. 
the genotype frequency for the heterozygous genotype is 0.25 times 0.75 plus 0.25 times 0.75, which is 0.38 and the genotype frequency for the homozygous recessive genotype is 0.75 times 0.75, which is 0.56. Traditionally, Hardy-Weinberg formulas use the letters P and Q to represent the dominant and recessive allele frequencies respectively. So we can rewrite the expected genotype frequencies of the population as follows. Big B, Big B would be written as P squared, which is equal to 0.06 in this example. Big B, Small B would be written as 2PQ, which is equal to 0.38 in this example. And Small B, Small B would be written as Q squared, which is equal to 0.56 in this example. Because these values are proportions, they must equal one. At this point, it is evident where the values in the Hardy-Weinberg formula for genotype frequencies come from. The formula for genotype frequencies is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Notice how the formula for allele frequencies P plus Q equals 1 must also always equal to 1. The last thing that is left to do is to compare the observed genotype frequencies with the calculated expected frequencies. The values observed in this case are close, but not the same, which means the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. From this, we can conclude that some evolution is happening at this locus.